Good evening, YouTubers. Uh, today we're going to be discussing a little bit more on the subject about voltage divider. And it's important when we talk about sensors. Like for example, a voltage divider by definition is something like this. Two resistors like this, but in a typical scenario, this will be the voltage VCC at a given voltage and this will be the ground. And the voltage in the middle is the voltage that we will take like for example uh, to the Arduino. And that's very typical in a design in where you are taking a value that for example if this is the resistor that change you know according to some thermistor that that resistor change res resistance value and then you have a curve like this one in where the resistor value will change according to temperature following a curve like this at 100 degrees C you have 1k and then let's say that at 25 degrees you have 10 k's and then at zero degrees somewhere here you have a value of about 100 k so that's typical and and uh, and the design from this thermistor curve will be that that thermistor will be like this one and if the temperature change as shown here then the resistor value will change that will cause that this value change as well now since we are always working on this to connect this VRD voltage to Arduino obviously to an Arduino to an analog point on the Arduino if I draw an Arduino here let's say Arduino Uno uh, Arduino Uno have about I think six A0 a1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6 channels. So let's say that I connect these two here. You want to be sure that VCC equal no more than 5 volts. So in essence, the nice thing about it is that the Arduino provides those 5 volts. And in doing so, you ensure that never you exceed the 5 volts on the Arduino. So, because the analog point for the Arduino, any analog point, any analog here, channel, the voltage that is allowed has to be between 0 and 5, no more than 5 volts. And that's basically how this works. You want to be sure, 100%, that the voltage that is presented at the analog point in Arduino is always between 0 and 5, no more than that. So, how this voltage divider works? Very, very simple. It is a circuit like any other circuit. Like you have 5 volt here, and you have one resistor here, another resistor here, and this is returned back here to ground or negative. And uh, so, this is what typically I call R1, and this is typically called R2. And now the voltage that you are interested in is right from here. That's what we call voltage to Arduino, just to say the least. So on this scenario, basically what you are doing is on this circuit, you want to ensure that the current, that the amount of current I never, never exceed about 0 0.5 milliamp. You can have a, like for example, uh, in amps that will be 0 0.0005 amps right so how to pick R1 or R2 how you ensure the proper R1 for your voltage divider and the proper R2 because that's basically what you're trying to uh, figure out here so you you use this as the as scenario but you need to know something about R2 in order to do that and that's where this curve come handy either this curve or the specification of the instrument particularly that sensor that change resistance value according to a 
you know, to a physical property, like in this case, temperature. If we pick this as, as a good example for that, what we know is that uh, at 100 degrees C, the thermistor have a resistance value of 1K. See? Now, at 0 degrees C, that resistance value is 100K. 100K. What's going to happen is when, when this value hit 1K, which is the smaller value that we will be using on our scenario here, we want to ensure that R1 is big enough to protect uh, and maintain the current around this value. With that said, basically what we need to do is pick this as a worst scenario because it's the lowest resistance value that our circuit will have in a given moment. With that said, we have minus 5. We do the Kirchhoff analysis right here. Minus 5 plus I times R1 plus I times R2 equals 0. What we know on this circuit basically is that 100 degrees we can have 1K value on R2. So we need to set R1 because the current we already know is an expect that we want to be around this value here. With that said, basically what we need to do is IR1 equal 5 positive now minus IR2. So meaning that R1 equal, like for example in this case, 5 IR2 over I. If we substitute some of the values that we already have here, we know that R1 is equal 5 volt maximum that's coming from the voltage divider that I'm showing right here. So R1 equal 5 minus 0 0.0005 R2, but R2 in this case is 1K, put a thousand, that's a 1000, and all that divided by 0 0.0005 and let's check what that do for us 4.5 divided by 0 0.0005 that's about 9000 or 9k I'm going to write like this or approximately 9k so that's the value that we will set on this uh, voltage divider so that now the voltage divider start to look more like this so this is the thermistor where that resistor value will change according to a particular curve and we pick from here the voltage that will go to the Arduino and here is the 5 volts that is provided as well for the Arduino and what is important now is that R1 is 9K. That's the value. Could be 9K, could be 10K, you know, whatever you have available, because it will not affect much the calculation for the voltage that going to the Arduino. Uh, shouldn't be less than 9, it should be, could be higher. That, that would be okay. Now, what is the voltage, you know, that you are getting from this scenario now? It's very simple to get that because this is a voltage divider. And V ARD that the voltage that goes to the Arduino will be then R1. And sorry, this is let's call this R2 because we know that this is R1. So it's going to be the current I through the circuit, this current here, times R2. So in a given moment, let's say that uh, we can calculate I in well. For any resistance value here on R2, that would be very easy. You can use, like for example, knowing that that I is basically, if you check here, is in a Kirchhoff analysis. That I, well, actually, I can let me let me demonstrate that here. So that would be minus five plus I R1 plus I R2 equals zero. Now. If you don't know the I, but you know R1 and R2, basically the current here will be, the I will be the voltage divided by the sum of R1 plus R2. And that's how you calculate the current. So in this case, if I know the current, which, which is basically the voltage divided by R1 plus R2, if we multiply that by R2, 
now we got the voltage that is going to the Arduino what the what's the important of doing so is because now we start to have a table a nice table that we can start to generate and that table is very important for what is coming next which eventually is the calibration like for example temperature temperature we have uh, we start by typically by doing by knowing this curve we have to have an idea of the thermistor what is the thermistor curve I just kind of draw that one there to give you an idea so the thermistor curve will have like for example I am using here three values but a true calibration will have I don't know 50 values or even more so uh, for this case when the temperature is 0 degrees C that's one case I got 25 and I also got 100 degrees C now what is the resistance value in this case called R2 for like for example going back to the curve here like uh, when the uh, temperature is 100 degrees I got about 1k so this is basically here 1k I can write it like that 25 is about 10k uh, I have to say that this typical thermistor which at 25 degrees have a 10k resistor resistance value is definitely that's what is the it is called it's called a 10k uh, thermistor now uh, at zero degree I said that's a uh, hundred K you see now the next thing that is important here to in this table is the voltage that is coming from the Arduino that voltage from the Arduino we put it here now for that we can use this equation as shown here this is the equation that I need to get the voltage and if I use that equation like for example let's try to fit that right here the voltage will be 5 volts R1 plus R2 notice that R1 is always fixed at 9k that's what you said I mean, and, I mean that was the calculation so that's 9 so I got 9 here plus 100 now notice that I'm adding 9k plus 100k that's no problem because they have the same unit and I'm, I'm multiplying that by R2 but R2 is about 100k 100k that this RK so K cancel out and you end up with this number 5 times 100 divided by 109 and uh, so let's see what that will hit it's about 4.59 volts so the others I don't want to do this again but uh, the others it can be calculated um, let me put uh, just as a reference the formula how that would look like so it's going to be 5 over R1 R1 is 9 but now we got plus 10 here and that multiplied by by R2 in this case is 10 see and the last one will be uh, 5 divided by 9 uh, plus 1 times 1 so let's do this one so that would be obviously 0 0.5 volts and uh, the one in the middle let's see that will be 50 50 uh, divided by 19 2.63 volts so that's going to be 2.63 volts so we got that the next thing that's going to happen is eventually on this table that yes indeed you got temperature you got the resistance value you got the voltage going to the arduino now in the arduino there's going to be a magic happening which i call analog to digital converter let's see how that looks like now here we have the ADC and what's going to happen is oops there we go what's going to happen is that this voltage need to be converted to a decimal number based on the analog to the liter converter for the Arduino now here it's very critical that you understand that that conversion depends on the number of bits 
for the conversion. Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno has uh, 10 bits. The Mega, Arduino Mega, I believe has 12. What that means is that for the conversion to happen, like for example, in this uh, microcontroller, you have a range on voltage, and that voltage will have to be converted to an analog analog to digital. In that case, like for example, when the voltage is zero, the conversion is zero. But now, when the voltage is five volts, as a particular case on the Arduino and the Mega, that will be converted to a value here that depends on the number of bits. A bit is the smaller memory in a computer that could be, like for example, this is a bit, let's say a space that could either be in one moment, could be a one or could have a zero. That's a smaller piece of information within a computer, right? It's called a bit. Now, if you have 10 bits in an Arduino Uno, it's like I'm saying is something like this. So let's say that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So those are 10 bits. Now, what are the values of those 10 bits in decimal? That is, uh, we just, it's a conversion now from binary to decimal. That means that from binary, this will be two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, two to the five, two to the six, two to the seven, two to the eight, and two to the nine. And the story is, when you do that, like for example, two to the zero is one. If this bit is on, and let's say that we are at maximum voltage, that means that all bits here will be one. The content, the inside, whatever is inside will be like this, you see? And with that said, basically, if you add all these numbers, right? Two to the zero is one, two to the one is two, two to the two is four, and you keep adding because that's the idea. Two to the three, that would be eight, two to the four, 16 to the five, 32, and you keep adding all of them. I think uh, two to the nine, that's five, 12, I believe. If you add all them up, the sum will be 10, 23. What would that mean? It means that this value here is actually, let me get erase the inside here. That value will be 10, 23. And that's the maximum at five volts. If it's the mega, that will be 12 feet. So you keep, you need to add two more here. And that probably is about 4,000 something. All right. But we are doing this for the Arduino Uno. Well, that said, Basically, the only thing that we need to do is do a little bit of interpolation. Very simple, like for example, let me make this table again. So we got voltage and we got the a ADC and this is 0 to 5 and this is 0 to 1023 because we are working on a 10 bits uh, binary conversion and any value, any voltage here, let's call voltage getting to the Arduino, will be converted to a value that I call ADC. All right. So with that, with that information, we can do from here good interpolation. That interpolation is basically voltage Arduino minus zero over phi minus zero has to be equal to ADC minus 0 over 1023 minus 0. Now, if what if we are interested in the ADC because we know voltage, then we only need to uh, put this equality in terms of ADC. Like for example, for that case will be VRD divided by 5 if we multiply that by 1023, we end up having ADC. So the ADC is simple. The voltage that we, we already have divided by five and multiplied by 1023. All right, so 
going back to the table we are here in the table so we have a voltage that is five, 4.59 so what we're gonna do is use this formula we're gonna use this formula Let's see if I can copy it so basically with that formula what we're gonna do is equal here like for the first one it's gonna be 4.59 divided by 5 and multiplied by 1023 one important thing to say about the ADC, this is an integer. Meaning, no decimal place. No decimal place. So let's do the first calculation will be, let's see. That's 4.59 divided by 5 multiplied by 1023. That's about 939. 11 uh, let's write it down so that's 939.114 uh, now integer meaning that all this is gone so the number is 939 that's basically what we have now if we go for the other one 263 that will be 2.63 divided uh, by 5 multiplied by 1023 and that's 538 so we got a 538 here and the last one is 102 they, it got decimal places but we trunk them out 102 we round we round to the next integer so these are the numbers 539 538 and one and 102 and that's basically the most important aspect of this would be this because when you have the ADC you're going to compare now that ADC against so the ADC will be compared against temperature because those are the two most important aspects for making a sensor out of an Arduino for example you want to make uh, record temperatures basically you don't care about R2, you don't care about voltage Arduino, and you care less about ADC. What you care is about temperature. What happened is that you have to go through all this to ensure that the sensor works as expected and that it provides the correct temperature. Actually, what you will be reading at the Arduino will be this value. So you are reading that. In essence, this is your X and this is your Y. When you think about that, Life will be easy because basically what you are going to be doing is another table that has uh, on the X the ADC and now on the temperature will be on the Y axis. So this is very important. This is one of the mistakes that many people do that confuse the axis here. At the level of Arduino, this is what you will know. This is a known value. The Arduino is producing this, but it needs an equation to get you back to temperature in engineering unit. In this case, uh, centigrade. So basically what we are saying is that at one point in time, when the, you have zero degrees centigrade, the Arduino will be producing an ADC value of about 939. Now, when you have 25 degrees, the value will be about 538 on the ADC and it is, if the temperature happened to be about a hundred degrees then you're gonna get a value of 102 and uh, obviously for a calibration these are only few point three points will not make it no will not make a good calibration at all but it's just an idea eventually you have to have more points like 20, 30, 40, 50 points just to be able to construct a nice calibration curve that will look more like this. Many points from the temperature, from the, the range that you want to study. So you will have many points as I'm showing you here. Each one will analyze. So let's say that this is 100 and this is here let's say zero degrees and you want to have a good calibration curve so you have to have all those points so you can trace them 
and now here is the story you can have a nice correlation and an equation to correlate all those points you can certainly do that and it will be nice because if you have a function that will correlate all those points a function that might look like this like temp equal to a constant called a plus another constant b times uh, in this case will be something like uh, I don't know maybe e to the minus c and here we'll go uh, let's say this is uh, what we got here sorry for this this is not temperature let me correct this this is ADC ADC and this is temperature so let's see if I got this right so when the temperature is uh, very high 100 degrees we got a very low value here that would be 102 here and uh, and when the temperature is very low let's say here 0 degrees then we get the ADC here is about uh, 939 there we go so that's the is ADC on the X axis versus temp which is on the Y axis so you happen to have an equation that looks more like this a plus b e to the minus c times adc that equation will provide probably i mean everything that you need but you have to develop this type of equation in where you can find a b and c right but that's uh that's a long a long shot you have to have you have to be able to generate how to fit curves and uh, using using minimum square that's another story so we will not do that basically what we'll do is try to correlate small step in where most of the curve look like uh, linear curves you see right now what I did is making kind of a like a four zones in where you have this one two three and four and depending on the ADC value you switch from this equation to another equation to another equation to another equation and that's very simple to do because basically you take all this point and make your curve well actually it's a straight line here and for this zone one let's say that we call this zone one so you end up having an equation that looks more like this like temperature equal and a slope this curve has a slope so let's call that m1 times adc plus a constant let's call that b1 so you just need to have this curve or this the correlation here only for this point pick this point get it out make a table out of them and then do the correlation in Excel for example and you get this curve and you get at least you get the slope and the intercept you will do that the same for zone 2 and you get another equation that will be similar to the first one obviously but that will be M2 times the ADC plus B2 which is another intercept and you do that the same for 3 and for 4 so that's how this is done and very simple and very accurate all right maybe this can be done as well but you need to have a nice curve fitting over the all the points using this kind of a idea you can divide uh, the curve in many zones and generate as many of this curve as required the important thing is when you are at the level of the Arduino then you have to program each of these zone using the if instruction if for example let's say that uh, we call the ADC typically it's called we call it ADC let's say that we call it ADC A0 if ADC A0 meaning that we connect our Arduino uh, it was connected like show here you see connected to A0 we go here and, and let's say that we are programming the Arduino at one point in time if ADC 
underscore a zero less than let's see where we are here for example let's say that this value here is about 300 so less you can say less than 300 now the question is is the 300 included let's say that is included then if it's included less or equal 300 then open a bracket and you put the first equation here for someone then you set temperature equal m1 times adc we call it adc underscore a0 right plus whatever is b1 we are talking about programming in the arduino so we put this at the end and we close the bracket open and close now that's will define for some one how about some two then you do the same if adc a0 and here we have to do a couple things let's see how we do this because we're going to be using one two three four zone if adc a0 greater than or equal well actually let's say greater than uh, in this case 300 we we open this parenthesis we're going to open another one because there's an issue here that this is correct it has to be correct but we need to set that and two things need to happen and we, we are adding this end here since we're going to be using an N here, the symbol for this, I'm not using, let's see if I can see it, see if I see it on my keyboard here. I'm not sure whether my keyboard is showing up. Is this one. This is the symbol that we want to use. Let's see, if I hardly see that symbol that we want to use. All right, you need to look for that symbol. And because basically you put two of those like where you're going to set the end you need to put that symbol two of those one near the other so that this looks more like if adc a0 greater than 300 and we can open another parenthesis here and less than we go back here to the table or to the curve and less than let's say that this value here is 500 i don't know whatever some value here 500 let's put 500 so that we can go back here and set and adc underscore a0 less than maybe you want to include the 500 but then you put equal 500 if those if that condition is true now we can set temperature open a bracket and adjust the temperature temperature equal now here is m2 second slope times adc underscore a0 plus b2 and we close the bracket see if it's less than 300 it goes right here but now on this one if it's greater than 300 but less than 500 it goes here we can do the other one which is the third one would be if open open another parenthesis adc a0 greater than the last one that we checked which is was 500 close here and ADC A0 less than maybe you want to do inclusive well but it's not like that it's done like this less equal now let's get back to the curve and that would be this one here I don't know let's say 700 you have to say a number 700 then less or equal 700 close here and you open a bracket and put the temperature equal m3 times adc a0 plus b3 and close the bracket for the last one 
again we what we are saying is that we divide the sum in four sections that's basically what I'm, what I'm saying and that's why we have for each sum then we will have an equation that will represent that temperature the last one if open two parentheses um, let me see if I'm, I'm, I'm closing well here's missing one parenthesis and here as well and here okay this with this one this one with this one and the last with the first so everything makes sense if here we go ADC a zero now greater than 700 close parenthesis and open a parenthesis ADC a zero um, let's see do we, we need that we don't need it because that's our last sum so we don't need the N this part here is just that if it's greater than 700 then that's it because in that case we open a, a bracket here and we write the last sum that temperature equal M4 times ADC a0 ADC underscore AC that's the name of where we are reading the analog signal is being read there plus before close here and close the bracket that's it so this is how you're gonna present if you divide in four zones so you have like for example here um, I'm, sh I'm showing here that's zone one Zone two, zone three, and the last zone. So this is one, two, three, and four. You will, I mean, if you divide in more zone, then you have to specify each one, like I'm doing here, using ranges. And the, the you know, the thing that I'm introducing now is the end condition that if this happened and this happened, if both are truth, because if one of them fail then it's not going to get into to do this so both need to be true like for example let's say that the number the ADC in one particular moment ADC A0 is I don't know let's say 300 310 just to say a number 310 now you get here and it check well if the ADC A0 is less or equal than 300 if I is the content is 310 this will fail See, if that failed, this will not be executed. It will, it will move to the next one. Now, if the ADC underscore A0 is greater than 300, yes. And that value is less than 500 or equal. Yes, they are both yes and that this is executed. What's going to happen with this one? It will not be executed. Why? Because the value ADC A0 is not greater than 500. So this will not be executed. How about the last one? If ADC underscore A0 greater than 700, no, it's 310. So it will not be executed. So that's the beauty of this. So you don't have to do a fancy curve, but only with with linear regression, you do uh, each zone, and then you get uh, you get the proper values using this the if uh, condition. I think that the, I talk more than enough. Remember, the idea is any piece of equipment or sensor that provide a physical change. And let me move here from one page to another so this looks good. What I'm saying is any, at this point, any sensor, let's say that you are measuring anything, pressure, temperature, volume, uh, level, any illumination you know whatever you are measuring and if there is a sensor that produces signal and that signal is a resistant value that will change according to this according to whatever change here then that's kind of nice because basically you end up with a very nice instrument that is going to be built under a voltage divider as shown here and uh, so this is the resistance from the sensor and that's a variable resistor and this resistance will be fixed based on 
what I told you about it how to fix R1 and this voltage is the voltage that's go to the Arduino and uh, basically you just need to understand what are the ranges that you're going to be working with your sensor have a great evening bye